Welcome to the test, ladies and gentlemen. I appreciate you guys coming by very much. Uh, you know, I'm just I'm playing with you guys. I'm not in a bad mood. I'm in a good mood. I'm chilling. But you know, I did grab uh, the round four game for you uh, from the Chess Olympiad that we just got done playing. So I got Wesley So uh, versus Yavukir Sindarov of Uzbekistan. <clears throat> As you guys know, that is the team. Well, you guys might not know. Uh, that is the team that did win uh, the Chess Olympiad. Uh, for the men's side, uh, they were a crazy team. Uh, you guys probably have heard of Notre Beck Abdusa Tarov. Uh, you know, he's one of the highest rated players on chess.com uh, and a, a pretty big force. Uh, but anyways, I appreciate you guys very much for coming by. Anybody who is coming from the Philippines, um, I will say mabu hai to you. Kamustana uh, aking makai bigan. Magandang umaga, magandang kapon, magandang arao, magandang gabi, whatever time it is for you. Hello, Ulit. I appreciate you guys very much for stopping by. Uh, anybody who is coming from Uzbekistan or who does speak Uzbek, uh, I will say assalamu alaikum to you or salam uh, and rahmat. I appreciate you guys very much for stopping by. But if you guys are ready to go, let's take a look and see what we got for this game. All right, man. So we got the move D4. Knight comes to F6. We got C4 and we have G6. You know, all very super standard stuff. And as crazy as it's going to sound... <laughs> We have reached a point in the game that if you do want to pause the video and guess and see what move Wesley So plays uh, in this position, go ahead and do so. <laughs> okay, so uh, the reason that I stopped the video in this exact position uh, is because Wesley So plays one of the craziest moves I think that he's probably played in an opening uh, and I really was looking at it like, man, are we playing bullet chess? Because this is literally something that you'd see uh, from somebody who's playing bullet. Not somebody who is playing an hour and a half game. Like, they literally have 90 minutes each. Plus, I think when they hit time control, they have more time than that. But Wesley So, in all of his super grandmasterness, plays the move H4. So... I don't know how many of you guys out there, probably like nobody, because I wouldn't have guessed this move myself. Uh, he's literally just saying, hey, bro, I want to start chipping away at your, uh, <laughs> you know, your fee and kettle position immediately. But it's weird because we kind of transpose over into like a pretty normal type of an opening, kind of. Uh, in this position right here, normally this is a King's Indian. Normally you'll see like some Knight to C3s. Uh, you will see some Knight to F3s, or you might even see an F3 just in an attempt to get like the best possible pawn center ever in the world. Uh, but you literally never see H, H4. Uh, and, I mean, it is crazy that we... It's still it's not even a novelty. Literally, somebody else has already played it, too. So it's crazy. So, like I said, we do see the move H4. We got the move C5. So we see D5. Uh, and this is literally like a King's Indian, but it's like a Banco Gambit hybrid situation. And pretty much, it's just pretty much a, like a Banco. Uh, because in the Banco, you do have, uh, you know, D6, you have G6 and Bishop to G7. Uh, and then you do have a rapid castle. You're just giving away a pawn. So that's literally what we see in this position. Uh, we see the move B5. Pawn takes B5. And then we see the move A6, which is uh, the exact uh, blueprint for the Banco Gambit. And I will say, for those of you out there that want to play the Banco Gambit, be very careful because it is completely lost. Uh, black should never win a Banco Gambit. But it, it has a lot of sting to it. And if you don't know what you're doing as white, that's literally how black is able to win, just throwing off white enough. Uh, so be careful if you feel like, you know, investing your time in doing that uh, type of a game. Uh, so we do see the move E3. We see pawn takes B5, bishop takes B5. And then we have queen to A5. <laughs> it's like, black's like, ha, your bishop is dead. And white says, no, it's not. I got knight to C3. So, I mean, we, we just covered the bishop. But you got to be careful when you just move your bishop all willy and nilly. Uh, because sometimes you can be subject to this little check uh, winning the bishop if, let's say, the knight is gone or something like that. Let's say it's over here chilling. Yeah, you're going to be losing your bishop. So be careful with that. Uh, but we do see knight to c3, like I said. And then we have the novelty of the game, which is bishop to a6. But anybody who is familiar with playing the Banco Gambit as black or even as white, this is a very, very common uh, you know, thing that people try. Uh, because basically, if the bishop takes on a6, which is what we see in the game, uh, the queen is going to take back. And then you kind of have a little bit of an issue sometimes as far as developing your king. Like, I mean, getting castled, I mean. Uh, because this queen is, uh, you know, 
attacking a square uh, that's in between the king and castling. So you actually can't legally castle uh, if you play, let's say, like knight to f3 or something like that. So very common idea. So it's not, you know, I, I find it kind of interesting that that's a, you know, a novelty. But anyways, we see knight g to e2, and this is pretty much solving that problem because knight g to e2 is covering the king, so that way it's not castling into a dangerous position. Uh, and after bishop comes to g7, we do see castles by white. So everything is everything, you know, kind of interesting position because we just kind of have this pawn just like flung out there for no reason. So, uh, but we do see castles by black. Uh, we got a4. And, I mean, this is literally all the Binko, like I said before, with just that weird H4. Uh, and so, I mean, this is anybody who plays the Banco as white, it's going to, everything is going to look exactly the same except for uh, this knight being right here. And also, you don't castle uh, a lot of the times when you're playing on the white side of the Banco because you, you know, you allow the bishop to take on F1 type stuff. But that's for those of you that play the Banco. So we do see queen to C4. Really interesting placement for the queen. Uh, we do see the move G3. We got E6. Uh, and then we have uh, the move B3. And basically why they say, I don't like you. Move. <laughs> because you're not welcome on C4. You know, which is not like that big of an issue. The queen just slides over to G4. Uh, but uh, something that was interesting is in this position, it is actually very rare to see the move E6. Uh, that's not usually what you'll see in this position. Uh, a lot of the times, and what is most common, uh, is going to either be the move D6 uh, or the move knight to a6. And the thing that you have to think about is you are a pawn down in this position. If you can see the, you know, black has six pawns uh, and white has seven pawns. So, you know, they are down an entire pawn uh, for a little bit of play, but you have to play as aggressively as possible as black. Uh, you cannot allow white to, you know, kind of unravel themselves and get, you know, themselves in the correct position. Uh, and that's kind of uh, what Cinderov is allowing Wesley So to do in this position. Like I said, we see the move e6. We knock the queen with b3. The queen goes over to g4. And then we have bishop to a3. We see the knight down to a6, very common. And then the rook comes over to c1. Any of you guys that do play d4 and you have to play into the Banco Gambit because uh, black just wants to, you know, play kamikaze chess. You literally know that this rook in the corner and this bishop on c1 are usually your biggest problem pieces. Uh, so the problem is trying to push b3 and, and not have some type of discovery with this bishop because this bishop can become very dangerous. So as you can see, the bishop is out here doing its thing, you know, kind of blocking that pawn down and the rook has slid over. So basically white has solved all of their problems. Uh, so they don't have any issues uh, and this is literally a position that white should just completely win. Uh, so we do see uh, the move pawn takes d5. Uh, and we have to do something interesting in this situation. Uh, because you can't just get happy and say, hey, there's a pawn in the middle of the board. Let me grab it. Because if the knight takes, you're going to be looking at knight takes. And then the problem is your knight is hanging here if you recapture here. So as a result of that situation, uh, after the move pawn takes d5, we see Wesley So go knight to f4 first. And ask black, you know, what are you trying to do, bro? You know, are you trying to trade or what are you trying to do? So we do see rook f to b8. Uh, and then we see another very, very typical move uh, of the uh, Banco, and that is knight to b5. So like I said, any bank, any player that plays against the Banco as white, this is like a dream scenario for you to be in, to have all of your pieces developed and literally just be up uh, some material. And, you know, white is going to be getting their pawn back. So you're literally up material in this position. Queen takes D1, Rook F takes D1. Uh, we see the move D6 now. Uh, but, I mean, after Bishop to B2, you know, pretty much black just has pawns kind of hanging everywhere. I mean, this pawn is hanging, this pawn is hanging. I mean, once this once this pawn drops, this pawn's going to, you know, be under fire and stuff like that. So white just has a completely dominant position as a result of all of that. And so we do see the Rook coming down to B7. But after we take on F6 with the Bishop, we have just removed like any defenders that we need. Plus that bishop was kind of a problem piece anyway. So we get rid of it. Bishop takes f6 and now we take back on d5 and white is up just a clear pawn. Uh, but they are insanely winning this position. Mostly because like I said before, not only are they up a pawn right now, but this pawn is absolutely going to be dropping. Uh, you cannot protect it with his because you're going to be looking at f4. The bishop obviously can't come back here because the knight's going to take, the rook's going to take, and then you just have like literally a free, free pawn. So you just got to make sure you hold everything together as white and you should be good to go. The bishop comes back to g7. Uh, we see rook up to d3. You know, when we capture here, we don't we don't want to lose our pawn because, I mean, we have a lot of strength in these pawns over here. So, like, let's not do that. So we see rook a to b8. We got the move g4. 
we see the move c4 but that just literally throws away a pawn it does kind of free up your knight being able to move so it, you get a pawn back after the rook takes c4 knight goes to c5 and i mean you do get your pawn back but i mean you don't really want to be trading down uh, as black so the rook does come down to d1 knight takes b3 uh and then now we do see the knight taking up uh, on d6 and like i said i mean white just really just kind of has too many pawns you guys can see the bars way up there you know white is just in the complete driver's seat in this game uh we see the rook over to a seven and this is a pretty miniature kind of a game we see the move knight goes to c8 and it is in this position uh that cinderov does resign the game and i mean like I said, you guys can see that white just literally has like, you know, two extra pawns uh, in this position. And it's so it's pretty completely dominating. But maybe it might not be 100 percent clear, you know, why, you know, black resigns in this position. Like how like is it really that lost? The answer is like a thousand percent. Yes. Uh, it's just simply because. I mean, this minor piece and this minor piece for black are just nowhere near the effectiveness of these minor pieces for white. Uh, and you are in very, very dangerous water right here. Uh, basically, <laughs> the position is so bad that you have this rook on a7, right, that is attacked by this knight on c8. Uh, so your first impulse, of course, is to move it. But the computer, literally for the top four moves, it says don't touch that rook. Just leave the rook there. So the moves that it wants to give you uh, are bishop to d4. <laughs> like, okay, so I mean, you guys notice that it's literally sitting next to a pawn. Uh, that is one move. Uh, the other move is knight to a5, which does kind of counterattack a little bit. So that seems legitimate. Uh, we do see bishop back to f8, uh, and then we see rook taking on c8. These are the top four moves by the computer. And if you don't play one of those four moves, I mean, you're literally going to just be getting smashed to death. If you do want to see what happens if you move that rook, uh, you know, you would be looking at rook a to b7 let's just like throw that out there because there isn't a whole lot of moves that black can really make uh you know there's something completely tactically wrong here because you're going to be discovering an attack on this rook uh with uh the uh, uh you know knight to f6 with check uh and there is no other moves on this whole file you have to move rook uh to be rook a to b7 uh, and so if you do that, you're going to be looking at knight D to E7 with check and the computer wants you absolutely to take that knight with the rook uh, because literally there's nothing else you can do other than moving king over here or king over here. And this right here is just simply mating. Uh, and if you move over here, you literally have to throw your bishop away because the bishop is going to have to cover and then the rook is going to be taken and you're just going to go from there. And I mean, you're just literally down an entire piece and a couple of pawns and you're playing Wesley. So, I mean, you, you could probably play me with this type of position and I'll just demolish you as white. So, and I'm not even like a soup, you know, I'm not even like these people's, these guys levels, but that illustrates uh, that situation. Uh, so like I said to you guys, uh, video. Uh, let me see. I just learned this word. So Rakmat, um, I appreciate you guys uh, very much uh, for stopping by and I'll see y'all next time.